Well, if you ask 10 different people or a dozen different people, why do you come to church each week? Um, you, you'd probably get a dozen different answers. You know, people would say something different. They'd say, well, maybe, you know, I, I like the worship or, you know, or, or, or I like hanging out with friends or, you know, or, or I want to hear, you know, what God is saying. Or someone might say, well, I've, I've, I've had a real encounter with God and my life's been changed and, and I want to keep moving forward in that. I want to keep growing in God. I think that would be the best answer. That, that's the answer I'd like to hear people say, that I, I want to keep growing. You know why? The reason is because the Christian life is all about growing in God. It's not about just staying stagnant or stationary. It's about moving forward, about moving on in God because He wants to grow each one of us, that we would, we would grow in our life. And I want to just um, share with you a scripture which has been very uh, personal and spe- special to me over the last number of years. Um, let's read this from the Message Translation. It says, Who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen? Now, he's talk. he's actually... You might say this is for pastors, actually. When I first read this, it said, Who then is a faithful, sensible servant to whom the master can give responsibility for managing his household and feeding his family? And I took that really personally at the time. I'll come back to that in a moment. But this is the message translation. I think this does apply to each one of us today, by the way. It's not just for pastors. Who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen? A person the master can depend on to feed the workers on time each day. Someone the master can drop in on unannounced and always find him doing his job. That's a bit challenging, isn't it? If you're an, if you're an employee, if you're working somewhere, you know, to know that the boss is going to just drop in on unannounced <laughs> to always find you doing your job. A God-blessed man or woman, I tell you. It won't be long before the master will put this person in charge of the whole operation. And I just love that phrase because who knows how big the operation might be. It might become huge. God God is wanting you and I to move forward in growth and promotion. The key word today is promotion. I believe that God promotes people. He wants to promote you. And He's looking for people that He can promote today. And before we go on, I want to just share with you that I'm not talking about anything that you need to do to receive the love of God for yourself. Because God loves you, as Neil's already shared, not because you do something or because you qualify in some way. He just loves you because He is God. That's what He does. And that that relationship that you have with God is because of His nature and His character and His forgiveness and His love for you. But He's still looking for people that He can put in positions of responsibility that he can raise up and promote. And that's what I want to share with you a little bit about today. About 10 years ago, I was reading in in Matthew's Gospel, and I came across this passage, and I've shared this before, but I started to read it in the the New Living Translation, and and, uh, it so gripped me. I couldn't get away from this one verse, and and, uh, I came back the next day thinking, well, I better better move on and read the next chapter, but I couldn't. I couldn't get past these couple of verses, and and uh, on the next day I came back and I just couldn't go, I couldn't go any further. And I read this one verse or these two verses for, for a whole month and God was just striking it into my heart. Who then is a faithful, sensible servant to whom God can give responsibility? The master can give responsibility for managing his household and feeding his family. And the message translation on your screen is giving a little bit of extra um, explanation for what that means. A faithful, sensible servant. Who feels like a faithful, sensible servant here today? Is that, is that you? It's okay to put your hand up. It's not, that's not a trick question. It's up for you to know. Am I a faithful, sensible servant? I tell you, when I started asking myself that question, you know, it, it was quite a, a personal question in, in my life. Anyway, I'd, I'd, I'd had this experience for a whole month where I couldn't get away from the scripture. And then one day, just around that time, the senior pastor of the church where we were going, he rang me at work and he said, look, uh, I'm going overseas for a couple of weeks and I need someone to look after this congregation uh, that really needs some help. And, and um, I said to him, I'll have to pray about it, have to think about it. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. 
I just knew straight away it was the thing, it was what God was saying. He'd been saying it to me all month, you know. Who's going to take responsibility for doing this job? And so I accepted it, and, and that became a wonderful experience for the whole season after that. But um, So I, I want to share with you this morning a little bit about how God raises people up and how God promotes people, because I know that He wants to raise you up and promote you. He wants to move you forward. And I think it's a, it's a key question for us today. And the first thing in God's economy, in God's world, in God's way of doing things, the first thing is function. We start off in God's economy by doing something. Now, that might be some menial task or it might be whatever task is in front of you to do. That's, what, that's where we start off. Now, I think this is really important for us to get this because something that the Holy Spirit has been just doing in my heart over the last little while is showing me the difference and the distinction between God's ways and the world's ways. And that they're like chalk and cheese, like night and day difference, the way God does something. In the natural mind, we think about getting ahead in life. Oh, we think about, well, I need to get ahead in life somehow or other. So what we do is we, we get our, our, kid, our children and we send them to primary school. Then we send them to high school and some of them will go to university. And in the back of your mind, as a parent, there's always this idea, well, maybe one day they'll be able to get their dream job. And you hope it's in the front of their mind. I'll be able to get this dream job, maybe. That's the, that's the natural way of thinking about these things. You know, God's way is completely different. He just starts off, he just throws you in the deep end from day one. Day one, start doing something. Just start doing. And all the qualifying and all the training all comes afterwards. It all comes after that. That's the way God does. And I want to take a, a moment right here to thank and acknowledge all of you people that are serving in some way, doing something, which is just everybody here in this, in this room today, doing something or other, serving. And I just think that's fantastic because we're all on this journey. We're all starting to um, invest in what God is doing. And I really appreciate that. So, so yes, there are some basic requirements. That's why it says who here qualifies for the job of overseeing the kitchen. There is, there is some basic requirements, but it's important that we understand that God doesn't look at your life, look for the qualified people so that he can call them to serve him. What God does is he qualifies the called ones. He doesn't call those who are qualified. So that's why you see pastors sometimes making mistakes Oh, you're all, that's very, very good acknowledgement, I could thank you. <laughs> Pastors do dumb things sometimes. That's because they're not perfect. They're not fully qualified yet. God is still at work in them. And guess what? He's still at work in you as well. He's still working in your life. He call, he qualifies those whom he calls. He, the calling comes first. So when we just start off doing something for God, that's the way it works. So it's because he sees what's in your heart and he sees what your destiny is. He knows everything about you. And I keep on referring to this Psalm 139, verse 16, which says, you know, God, you, you saw every day of my life written down in your book before I had even one of those days. Psalm 139, 16. So he knows what your future is and he calls you based on what he knows you'll become, not what you are right now. So sometimes that call comes and you, and you sense, I'm just really sensing God wants me to move in this direction, and you, but I, I feel totally incapable. That's totally okay. I, I have to say, in my lifetime, I've done probably a lot of different things that God has led me into, uh, in a lot of things really. And I can't think of a single thing that God ever asked me to do that I was actually qualified to do. He, he, he says, I want you to do this. And then you scratch your head and say, well, how? And then you say, well, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to, you're going to grow in the middle of this. That's it. So it starts off with just doing. That's, then, then after that comes a second thing, which is faithfulness. Who then is that faithful, sensible servant to whom the master can give responsibility? Now, in this, this passage that we read before, there's a little bit of um, definition. And it says, it says, um, Someone the master can, uh, uh, it says, can, 
you know, always find them doing their job. And it says that he can appoint them to all to know they're dependable. He knows that they're going to always feed the workers on time every day. Now, it, that's a farming story. And a lot of Jesus' parables and stories were about farming situations. Now, it reminded me when I was reading that the other day about um, an experience I had years ago. We lived in far north Queensland, and I was an electrical contractor. And, and I went out on a job about... Um, we lived at Atherton, right near, not far from Cairns. And we went out uh, about three or four hours' drive over into the Gulf Country uh, to a place called Mount Surprise. You might have, might have seen it, to a big cattle station out there. And they were building a new, a new home on this cattle station. And um, I, I was with another couple of guys doing the, all the electrical wiring of this, this big house. And so we were there a few days, and, um, and we stayed overnight, a couple of nights there, and they fed us, you know, uh, during that time. So uh, I, I, never, I haven't forgotten the meals we had. This is like 30 years ago, a long time ago. And um, so they were pretty memorable. Because I remember we used to, at the end of the day, or even in the middle of the day, we'd, we'd all you know, down tools and we'd go out at the back to the old house. They had this kind of a lean-to thing. And, and they were cooking up these big pots of, um, huge big pots of veggies and corned beef. And, and they would dish it all up on plates. And all the farm workers would be around there. And all the builders and the other tradespeople were there. And I'm not sure how many people, but a lot of people. And it was a real, like cattle station kind of a scenario where they were feeding all the workers and that's what this is talking about who's the faithful kind of person that's going to feed the workers on time every day you know what if those workers rocked up there they're pretty hungry after you know a lot of work and and the chef or the cook said oh so sorry i forgot to put i forgot to put everything on sorry so you have to have to go without today oh, i don't think they'd be too happy <laughs> They're expecting it on time every day. That's, that's when it's talking about faithfulness, that's what it means. The work, the workers, the, the person that can be in charge of the, the kitchen, he knows how to do that on time each day. It's talking about consistency, reliability, dependability. Now, I know that a lot of people struggle in these areas. And maybe you struggle with some of these things, being consistent, being reliable. Maybe, maybe you're one of those people who who really has great intentions. I know that a lot of people do. I really want to do what I said I would do. I really want to live up to the things that I said, but I struggle in that area. Because a lot of people have that issue. You know, they, they make promises. They commit themselves to things. Then all of a sudden, I'm not there. I, I, can't, I can't do what I said I would do. You know what? As a, um, as a business owner, um, you want to know that the job is going to get done. It's really important. It's just the first thing. We can talk about the quality. We can talk about the timeliness. We can talk about all sorts of other things later. The number one thing is getting the job done. Now, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, we built some units. And uh, we had a very good builder, reputable builder, building these units for us. And, um, um, but he was let down by one of, the, one of his subcontractors. And it actually was the plumber. And uh, if you're a plumber here today, sorry, but I'm not even going to plumbers, but um, this, um, so the plumber was there and he dug all the drains and put all the pipes underground. They laid, put down the slab and the building was going up. And I think at the time we wanted to put it, we changed the fence or something like that, moved the fence. So I said to the builder, I said, look, um, we need to drill a hole here. Is that going to, um, we don't want to upset the plumbing where the pipes are underground. And the builder said, um, well, uh, about the plumber, because we didn't know. See, he, he hadn't told us. But the plumber had done all the first part of the job and then just vanished. He was nowhere to be seen. They couldn't contact him. He's just gone, gone ski, you know. And so the builder said, ah, yes, well, about the plumber. We don't have a plumber. And guess what? Um, he never, never gave us any plans about where the pipes were underground. So we don't know where the pipes are. And we don't know what's what. <laughs> anyway, they got another plumber and it was all good. It, it all happened. It was all great. But the point is, uh, you know, God is saying someone who's going to turn up every day and, and, and do what needs to be done. That's, that's reliable. That's being consistent. That's being dependable. That's what he's talking about here. But I want to say, you know, faithfulness, faithfulness is much more 
but just turning up every day, doing something, whatever, whatever you're talking about, or, or even in church showing up each week. It's about God transforming your heart. It's about God doing something on the inside of your heart and, and, and showing the same servanthood that Jesus showed. And, and I've been really impressed over the last little while uh, with the life of Elisha. These scriptures keep, keep coming to me about Elisha. And um, Elisha, one of the great prophets in the Bible, he had an incredible servant heart. And uh, it says that Elijah, who was probably the greatest prophet, it says, God spoke to Elijah and says, I want you to go and appoint Elisha to, to replace you as, as your successor. So anyway, Elisha, Elijah eventually finds Elisha and uh, he's plowing out in the paddock with, it says, 12 yoke of oxen. That's how we know that Elisha was from quite a wealthy family. They had like 24 oxen pulling this massive broad acre plow you know, in, in back in the day. And, but it says that Elisha was with the 12th yoke of oxen. In other words, he was back at the back of the pack, at the very last, in the dust and the dirt. That's where Elisha was. And th that says something. I remember reading that years ago, and it just says something about the heart of Elisha. He was the son of a very wealthy man who could have been doing whatever he wanted, probably, but he was plowing with the 12th yoke of oxen right at the back in the dust. Had a servant heart. And then so Elijah, you know, appoints Elisha as his like apprentice. And then later on in life, I'm not sure how long that arrangement went for, but years later, Elisha's reputation was this. They called him, they said, he who poured water on the hands of Elijah. So here's Elijah, the great prophet of God. He's got dirty hands and he's about to have a drink. And he says to Elisha, oh, can you take that, that you know, water bottle and pour some water on my hands? I've got to wash my hands. That was Elisha's claim to fame. His reputation was, I hung around with Elijah and I poured the water on his hands when he wanted to have a wash his hands. Elisha had a servant heart. And, it, and to me, that's faithfulness. That's what the Bible's talking about when it says faithfulness. God is doing a transforming work in our lives, changing something on the inside, a faithful, sensible servant to whom the master can drop in on unannounced any time and find him always doing his job. Um, it's talking about someone who's a self-starter. Now, I know for those of you here that have employed people in your lifetime, you, you, you know what it's like. You want employees that are going to have initiative, that are going to just say, get in and get the job done, and you, you want... You want people to be not always standing around saying, you know, what have I, what have I got to do or, or waiting to be told. You want people to have initiative. That's part of this as well. Uh, and I remember years ago, um, most of you probably don't know this, but I was actually the principal of a primary school, a Christian school for about a year. And um, it wasn't a very big school, <laughs> but I was the principal. And during the training that we had for that, I learned this little uh, lesson about initiative. It's actually written on my wall in my office at the moment up there. And it goes like this. There's four levels of initiative. If you want to find out what initiative is like, it, like, it goes like this. Number one, someone who acts and report. In other words, just get the job done and then just report on what you've done. Number two, someone who asks, well, well what can I do to help? Well, that's pretty good. That, nothing really wrong with that. And then there's the the other kind of person who, says, who waits to be told what to do, and then right in the bottom is the person who has to be found to be told what to do. It's a pretty low level of initiative, would you agree? I mean, that's minus initiative at that point. I'm gonna, I, I, when I did my apprenticeship years ago, I, um, one, of, one of the other guys that worked in the, the, for the contractor where I did my apprenticeship, um, he... He did his apprenticeship with a very, very big uh, publicly funded organization. I won't say which one, but a, a, a government body. And he was quite proud of the fact that when they were doing their apprenticeship or they were working there, they spent a fair bit of their time staying out of the boss's way. You know, because they could get to work in the morning and spend the whole day kind of hiding so they didn't get anything to do. You know, that was, that was, his, that was his thing, you know. And I just thought, I don't ever want to be like that. 
you know, I want to be someone who either acts in report or says, what can I do to help? That, that to me is initiative. And that's the sort of thing that faithfulness is talking about, you know, having initiative. Someone the master can drop in unannounced, drop in on unannounced and find him always doing his job. Well, the th- third thing that happens after this, God is looking for those faithful kind of people that can grow in that. And what happens is, if you start doing something in God's kingdom, whatever it might be, and, and you demonstrate that faithfulness and you grow in that, what happens is you start to become fruitful. Fruitfulness begins to flow out of that. There's, there's a, a flowing of fruitfulness. And that's why it says, you know, a God-blessed man or woman, I tell you, a, a God-blessed man or woman, I tell you, fruitfulness is going to follow. Let's read from John 15, verse 16 in, in the Amplified. It says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting. I think that's what God wants for every one of us, uh, that we would not just, you know, live our life, you know, consuming resources, taking up air and, you know, and (laughs) taking up space. But God wants you and I to be part of the solution, to be fruitful in our life so that we can say at the end of of our life, well, we made the world a better place because we lived here. I think that's what God wants for every one of us, fruitfulness. You know, fruitfulness doesn't come just from me exercising my gifts in isolation. I think it comes from me being faithful in whatever role I'm in, wherever I'm placed, and... um, and being, being faithful and reliable in that role and staying connected to the vine. If you read John chapter 15, it talks about being connected to the vine. That's when you know that you can be fruitful in God's kingdom. I remember when I, um, at the, 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 the large church that we were involved in for many years, um, when I started work there, we, we'd come back from uh, Victoria and we'd moved to up, back up to Toowoomba and, and uh, I started working as an electrician again, and, and uh, we got involved in this church very, quite quickly, got quite involved, and, and uh, it wasn't long for I, I was doing, I think I was doing about seven different things in the church, you know, I, I was preaching there, and I was teaching in the Bible college, I was on the board, and I was maybe leading worship, I think, and I was uh, looking after new Christians, and I, I don't know, all these different things, and anyway, and I was doing that while I was also working full-time at another job, and, and um Anyway, one day the pastor just rocks up and says, well, there's a, a vacancy come up and we need someone to come on the team, on the staff, you know. And so I said, oh, okay, that works for me. So, so I accepted that and I, and I went on to the staff of that large church. And, and the funny thing about it was, uh, you know, when, when, I, when I started working there, I actually didn't do anything different to what I was already doing as a volunteer. They just started paying me. It was kind of funny at the time. You know, but I, I think, you know, when, when, we, when we just do what's in front of us, um, God opens doors for us and we become fruitful in what we're doing. Fruitfulness flows out of faithfulness and it flows out of function, out of doing something in the kingdom of God. How do you measure fruitfulness? Well, I think it's measured this way, just using what you have in serving Jesus. It's pretty simple, you know, just using what you have in serving Jesus. In Matthew 25, there's a great story of, of these three servants and uh, the, the master of the house gave, was going on a journey and he gave one servant five bags of gold, which is a lot of money, and the other one he gave two bags of gold and one servant he gave one bag of gold. And um, so that the servant that had the five bags and the one that had the two bags of gold, they invested them and, and they in, increased you know, a lot. Uh, they doubled what they had over a period of time. And so the master comes back and he says this. He was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. What a, what a great thing that is. Faithful in little things. God says, I'm going to make you a ruler over big things. I'm going to put much more in your life. I'm going to promote you. I'm going to raise you up. And I know that's what God wants to do with 
us here today. You used what you had. The last thing about this is fulfillment or promotion. Then God begins to promote. God says, I'm going to promote you. Here's, you know, you, you doubled what you had. Now I'm going to give you many more responsibilities. What a, what a great thing. In, um, in the message it says, it won't be long before the master will put this person in charge of the whole operation. So I think that God is watching over every one of us here and he will promote at the right time. He'll promote you at just the right time. In 1 Peter, there's this great verse of scripture that says, be content with who you are and don't put on airs because God's strong hand is on you. He'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He's most careful with you. And I like that thought that he'll promote at the right time because often we think, well, you know, I, I really think I should be promoted right now. <laughs> we want it now, don't we? You know, I want it now. That's a famous movie line. I just want it now from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You've seen that movie? I want it now. And God says, I will promote you at the right time because he knows how we've got to grow. We've got to grow through certain things and be developed in certain areas. And it says he will promote you at the, the right time. You know, self-promotion is everywhere in our society. People promoting themselves. It's actually the reason why, one of the reasons I got out of politics. I was in politics for about six years as well. And, and uh, I, one of the reasons I got out of that, because I just, I just, I'm not into self-promotion and I, I really struggled. And then in politics, you kind of have to do that. It just goes with the territory. And I found that quite difficult. And so I, I just, I struggle with that. So, you know, self-promotion is everywhere, but God is looking for the person who will humble himself and let him promote them at the right time. Not only that, he'll promote you to the right level. In the world system, it's possible, and I've seen this before, and it's actually happened to me. You can be promoted above your ability sometimes, just in the, in the world system, but God's going to promote you, not only at the right time, but to the right level. The point is, trust in God and learn to rest in Him. Don't try to figure it out yourself. Just let Him do it. Let Him promote you at the right time. Who's ever seen that movie, Hidden Figures? A few people? Great movie. I love that movie. If you haven't seen it, strongly recommend you look it up and, and see if you can watch that movie sometime. Uh, we saw it about a week ago, and, and uh, we've seen it before, but it's a great movie about three African-American women who worked for NASA during the 60s at the height of the racial unrest. And, and um, I'm not saying there still isn't racism in America, but um, it, was, it was pretty horrific during that time. A lot of upheaval happening, uh, Tom Martin Luther King and so on. And these three uh, women had brilliant minds. They were brilliant with mathematics and computer programming at a time when computers were just being invented, okay? So, uh, but what happened, because of all this, the, the uh, intense racism and sexism in the society, they couldn't get ahead. They couldn't be promoted. And so they weren't allowed to go to meetings that were important for their, their development. They, and they had to sort of stay back and they couldn't just because of what they were. And it was, it was really um, an incredible story. But eventually, it's a remarkable story how their gift made way for them. And the Bible says, if your gift will make way for you. It happened. Their ability and their gifts made way for them. And it became inescapable that these women had to be promoted because they were the most, the smartest people on the team. It was just amazing. And uh, this is at a time when they were putting the first manned space flights into orbit around the earth. And so they brought in these big IBM computers. In fact, they were so big, like imagine the doorway over there. They couldn't fit them through the door. So they had to break, break the door down to get these computers. And they brought in a whole bank of these computers, like along the wall, plugged them all in together, and they were trying to solve these complex mathematical problems. And they couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. And, uh, but these three women, <laughs> they, they solved the problems, and uh, it was just remarkable. So what happened is um, 
they smashed the glass ceiling over them and that the and the racism and they were promoted uh, you know, to high positions in that organization at that time. It was an, it's an incredible story. And the best part of all is that they were trusting God to do it for them. They were Christian women. They were trusting God to do it for them. And I know, friend, that if you put your trust in God, He will promote you at the right time.